What's up YouTube, Silver Dragons here, and in this video I'm going to be reacting to this Pawn Stars video about selling silver. This is a gentleman who goes into the shop, he sells a ton of silver, actually over 3,000 ounces, and I'm going to talk about how much money he actually made off of his silver investment, as well as cover a few things that the show doesn't talk about in regard to selling silver, and one thing that the Pawn Stars actually get wrong on this episode so let's do it thank you so much for watching my video i do sincerely appreciate it if you want to learn more about investing in precious metals or if you just want to watch awesome videos about gold and silver make sure to subscribe to my youtube channel okay let's dive into this video here i will pause it from time to time when i want to explain something in more detail but let's just get it rolling hey what do we got here a whole lot of silver let me help you out real quick. The old man is crazy about silver. He's going to be like a kid on Christmas morning when he sees this. I've never seen Eagle you hard, baby. I always get up, son. Not generally very Move quick. Your hand. <laughs> I came to the pawn shop today to sell my silver. I have over 3,000 ounces. Growing up, my dad always taught me to invest, and so I'm here today to cash in on that investment. If they want less than face value, well, we'll see what we can work out. That's awesome. I got some 90% silver dimes over here, some quarters. I got these bars, and this thing alone is almost 75 pounds. Oh, that's cool. Real quick, I just want to point out the only types of silver that this guy bought for his investment are 100 ounce silver bars, like this one right here. He has junk silver, and he also has that massive industrial bar. It's almost a thousand ounces of silver. Those really aren't for stacking, they're not meant for retail, but he got one anyway, so let's see where it goes from here. Most people don't realize until 1964, all US dimes, quarters, half dollars, silver dollars were all made out of silver. That's true. And all paper money was, was a promise to pay you real money. Right. I've been collecting silver, son, for the past 30 years. Silver and gold is a hedge against hyperinflation. All right, I just got to make sure, you know, it's all silver coin. OK. It's really important for me to scan all the edges on these to make sure there's no modern coins in here. When you look at an edge of a quarter or a dime today, you see copper and nickel. Pre-64, all silver. Yeah, no it's copper. really easy to tell which um, ones are silver. They look right. It's the right color. It's uh, all 1964 before. Uh, do you mind if I go away just to make sure they weigh the right amount? No problem. This really concerns me what's going on right here. They're weighing the bags of junk silver. So junk silver, a lot of times people store it in these canvas bags. He said he has dimes and quarters. Now, I don't know if they're buying the junk silver for the weight that they get or if they're just weighing it to see if it matches the amount of face value that he says he has in the bags. Because honestly, if they buy the junk silver for the weight that they get, he is getting ripped off. Because a lot of times, junk silver coins can get worn down. So if that's the case, then he's actually probably spent more than he's getting back. Here's a super worn down barber quarter right there. So that's silver. Look how thin that is right there. Whenever you buy junk silver, you buy it for the face value or how much it's supposed to weigh based on the face value of all of the coins. So it may weigh more, it may weigh less. And a lot of times it will weigh less because you can have really worn down or slick coins in there. So if they are buying this for the weight on the junk silver, not the face value, he's getting ripped off. Again, I don't know if that's exactly what's going on, but it does worry me a little bit. So uh, let's move on. That's a lot of junk. So you have 3,372 ounces of silver. He bought right at the bottom of the market. In the late 1990s, silver was down to $3 an ounce, but silver is the best conductor of electricity there is, period. Okay. Just about every cell phone, every computer, television, they all started needing silver. By, I think it was last year, half a billion ounces of silver was used just in industry. I hear that there's basically a shortage of silver nowadays. So what do you want to do with it? I want to sell it. Ricky, this one's going to be difficult to buy, and you know why. When you're talking this much money, 
There's too much temptation to put a bar of steel or something in the center. And when they make them this big, they don't make them in odd weights. What? Okay, okay. Rick got this completely wrong. So these 1,000 ounce silver bars, they're meant for industry. They're not meant for the average consumer to go out and buy. And when they cast them, they usually don't have the exact right weight. It's super hard to get a 1,000 ounce silver bar to be exactly 1,000 ounces. So because these aren't meant for the average consumer, they don't really care if it's exact. And usually they do just sharpie the weight on there like, like exactly you see in the video. So the Pawn Stars got this wrong. I don't know what they're talking about. It is weird that this guy has one of these, and I get why they're suspicious that it could be fake somehow. But anyway, they normally don't come in exact weights, so I'm not sure what they're talking about. But anyway, let's keep moving on. So you're saying this might not be pure silver? What I'm saying is there might be a chunk inside that's not pure silver. Yeah. Can uh, we test this thing? Um, yeah, drill a few holes in it take the shavings out, melt them down, make sure it's all silver. Give me a few minutes, everything checks out, I'll pay you. If it doesn't check out, I'll give you an address where you can send it. <laughs> okay? Okay. Yep, regular drill Testing bit. Testing silver is a little work, but it's not rocket science. First off, you have to drill deep enough to make sure there's not a lead core or some other metal in the middle of the bar. Then you melt down all the filings until they liquefy and you create a small Melt bucket. it, baby! The last step is dropping some nitric acid on it and seeing what color it turns. When nitric acid reacts with pure silver, it turns a creamy white. If it's any other metal, it can turn green, blue to gray. Yeah, that's all true. Okay, here's the deal. Yeah, it's all right, it's fine. <laughs> you got 46,000 for the coins, 33,390 for these bars right here. 32.39 times 942 equals. So we got a total of $110,901. Okay, we really need to pause here because we just got a ton of information from that last clip. So let's break it down and analyze it. For starters, we can infer that the spot price is $32.39 because we see Rick typing that into his calculator here when he's actually trying to figure out a price for that 942 ounce silver bar. And also we can tell how much he's paying for each of the different items based on what he just said. So $46,000 for the coins. We know he has about 1,430 ounces because that would actually equal $2,000 face value. And that would be $32.17 per ounce, which is just a hair under spot. And that's very normal for junk silver to sell for that amount. We know he has 1,000 ounces in the 100 ounce bars because we can see there are 10 of them in this photo right here and he's paying 33,390 for those so that's $33.39 per ounce or $1 over spot and I think that is very likely these are going to be easy for him to sell and then the big bar we just saw that information $30,511 or $32.39 per ounce which comes out to a total of $109,901 which is actually a thousand dollars less than he quotes the guy so I'm not sure why he's giving him a thousand dollar premium on top of what he originally quoted but we do know that the demand for silver was super high when this was filmed we can infer the date it was filmed based on the spot price in the video the episode aired on june 4th 2012 however the season started in april of 2012 and we know it takes them about a year after filming to start the season so if we go back a year we can see on february 18th 2011 silver spot was 3245 so it's likely it was filmed on this day however it could have been filmed in october november or december but i think that's unlikely because there wouldn't be very much time for them to edit everything before showing the season so this was likely filmed when silver was going up to an almost all-time high we will talk about how much he would have got if he waited to sell at the peak we'll also talk about how much he probably paid for all of this silver because we can figure out that information a little bit later but but first, let's figure out the price he sold it all for when he haggled with Rick. Well, let's make a deal. That is the deal. You can't go like 115? No. I mean, there's not a lot of profit here. On $110,901, I'm probably gonna make 1,500 bucks off you. That's not true. But can't you just hold all this for six months, a year, and sell it for 120? 
or hold on to it for six months and sell it for 50. <laughs> I am not a speculator in the silver market. I'm a businessman. So what's your best price you can give me today? Um, I'll go 111,000 even. I'll go up 99 bucks. How about 112? No, 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 there's no money to be made for it. You know, you're welcome to check around, but most people go a dollar back on everything. That might be true. Yeah, I mean, that's what I can do. I can do um, 111,000. Or if you want to, you can tote the stuff around and check some more. No way he's lugging that stuff out. Well, I bought it 12 years ago for way less than that. <laughs> 111 sounds good to me. All right, still 111. I'm really glad my dad taught me to invest, because today I'm walking out with over $100,000. I'm going to take one of these, Rick. Um, no, no, you're not. Come on. All right, so that's the end of the clip, and I actually really enjoyed watching this one. It was kind of cool to see someone go in, sell their whole silver stack, kind of see the whole process and everything. Now, as he mentioned, he had bought it all 12 years ago. So if we go back to 1999, we can see the average price of silver was $5.22 per ounce, which means he probably paid right around $17,600 for this. He eventually sold it for $111,000, giving him a profit of $93,400. Now here's the deal. If he waited to sell all of that at the peak, he would have been able to sell it for $164,000, giving him an additional $53,000 in profit. Now, obviously, it's really hard to time it, and no one knows when the peak is going to be. I don't know why he was cashing out. Maybe he wanted to put a down payment on a house or something like that. Who knows? But either way, definitely cool to see. I really enjoyed the clip. And I hope you all enjoyed it as well. I put a lot of work into this video, so make sure you smash that thumbs up and hopefully YouTube will recommend it to more people. And leave me a comment down below if you enjoyed this type of content. I've never made a reaction video before, so let me know if you want to see more stuff like this. And I want to say a massive thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in my next one. Silver Dragons, out.